what the characteristics of these particles are and let's see what they are the first one let's do a small experiment okay let's take a little beaker and uh, we have water in the beaker and what i want you to do is as you see that beaker put a spoon inside right you look at the level of water and once you put the spoon inside what happens to the level of water it rises a little bit makes sense doesn't it the spoon occupies some you know some space therefore the water has to go a little bit up right somebody has to make space for the spoon right great because spoon also is matter it, it has mass and occupies space great now do something else put your finger inside you know yeah now now that you do that as well you notice that the water level is still going to rise a little bit but now let's do something interesting right put a put a few crystals of sugar inside yeah just drop a spoon of sugar inside and stir for a while yeah if you can keep the water a little hot it's easier we'll tell you why that is later so stir for a while and see what happens yeah you've stirred and after a while you can't see the sugar now why that happens in the next chapter but first of all the sugar is inside the water but what happened to the water level it did not rise right it's exactly there so is sugar not matter so sugar does that mean sugar does not occupy space or does not have mass or something like that we, we know that's not true right if you've taken sugar it seems to be occupying some space so what is happening here so what is happening here that's right as you stick with that question think about it right the only possibility or, or a very very likely possibility here is that there is something in between these water molecules which we can call space and let's see what really it is let's take this water and if we were to like in the movie honey has shrunk my kids right if you were to shrink ourselves or equivalently zoom this out right what you're going to see is that as you notice the molecules of hydrogen with oxygen with hydrogen if you don't already know that that's pretty much what water is right two hydrogen stuck to an oxygen and if you go inside you notice that they're not all stuck together each of it is stuck to each other but in between there is so much space enough space for a miniature me to walk around and to stay in so what does that mean even though what you look at around you which seems solid right things that appear to be solid things that our mind smudges over is solid there are spaces in between them and it is here as you can see the sugar molecules come in stick so what's really happening the sugar does occupy space but it occupies the space in between these molecules of water makes a lot of sense doesn't it these are the advantages of being able to shrink ourselves down and notice what matter it is really made up of because what we see on the large scale is not what the behavior is as you go deep inside great so what's the first characteristic we've observed or the first characteristic we've observed that matter has space in between it even though it doesn't seem like it on the large scale great now what else can we find out now is all this matter just standing there static you look at water right it looks pretty calm you know a, a, a placid lake right on a very boring evening looks perfectly calm you drop a stone into it it beautifully starts rippling away it is the most the calmest sight in the world but do you think that if you go inside all the molecules of water themselves right are they just sitting there calm and not not moving around at all each molecule is just exactly where it is no movement if you think that what we want you to do is play with something right now right take a little beaker again and drop say a drop of ink into it so that we can see what's happening right put a little drop of ink if you don't have one go get one put a drop of ink and notice what happens right you drop the ink and it starts at a particular point and it should just remain there right but you know that that's not what happens watch what's going to happen it's going to take a while sometimes yeah but pretty much in some time the entire water is going to be colored so how did the ink that started off at a particular point on the surface go everywhere i mean this had to happen through some mechanism right there is some motion between because if the water was as solid and as still as you as it seems to be then this would not have happened right even if you take some potassium permanganate crystals and put them inside because they also have color you can notice this because in a while they begin to start going everywhere even if you're really lazy to do this you know that if you light an incense stick in one corner of the room right you can smell it in the other corner of the room really really quickly now how is this made possible if the molecules that make up what surround us are not moving if the molecules of water were not moving how would this ink have been carried between them to other places right it's a good indication that all that looks calm is not really calm it's actually moving around it is moving around and that's the second observation we're making about matter which is first one it has space between it second one it's continuously moving it's moving around even though it might not seem like that and later on you'll realize that's exactly what we mean by temperature yeah we usually think of temperature as the heat that we feel but the heat that we feel is actually the amount of 
kinetic energy as we can call it right movement yeah you will learn if you have not already learned it that movement is associated with a kind of energy called kinetic energy kinetic meaning motion so because of the fact that a body is moving it has some energy that is exactly what we mean by temperature great so two things has space keeps moving around third and probably the last one for now is that the question is all these hydrogen and oxygen and all together right h o h and then there are like around that's what you call water now that we made two observations about them the next question is do none of these water molecules really care about each other right do all these particles of matter are completely are they completely indifferent to their neighbors do they like not talk to each other they don't like you know they neither like them nor dislike them they just exist as if the other doesn't exist is there no relationship between them now that's a question right if that is true let's ask this question if that is true right if you were to drop water up or try to throw water around you would see that water kind of comes together in little lumps and we call them you know water 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 molecules or i don't know what water bubbles or something like that right you throw it almost forms a round shape right spherical shape the white forms a spherical shape is again and one of the questions you will find out as you get curious but you throw it around it's it starts lumping together if they had no, no interaction with each other why would they lump with each other right they would just be glowing around each water molecule separate and start flying away right so there's something keeping them together at least seems like that right forget water take something as simple as a as a chair or you know i give you a little box and you try to separate the box right you try to break that you need to break that box and apply some force to break that box give you a chalk it takes some force to break that chalk which means that whenever you see particles when you see matter and you see particles there seems to be something that's holding them together now on that side note i'm going to ask you one more question right you've all had paper you've played with paper even if you're not written on it if you were to try and tear paper it's going to tear pretty randomly right now the question i'm going to ask you but not answer is this but somehow if you make a line in that paper right and press it really hard and then tear it it tears perfectly right now that's a question for you to think about but even without that the question really here is why does it require some force to tear them apart right you could just like go do a little bit and then just come apart right so something's holding them together and that's our third and final observation which is that these particles attract each other and that's what's keeping them together we can apply some force and break them apart but does not mean that there is no attracting force there is so the three things that we've learned is that there is space that they are moving around and that they attract each other and that's our summary of the characteristics of the particles that we see around us so now we've seen that matter is made up of particles they're really small we also saw some characteristics one they have space between them two they keep moving and three they attract each other